All right, guys, so I recently sent my dog's DNA to a dog DNA science place where they figured out what DNA my dog has, and I wanted to see how legit this dog DNA place was. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna swab my DNA, I'm gonna send it to the dog center, and I'm gonna see if I have dog DNA. Maybe I'm like half poodle with this hair. Let's see if I'm a dog. Alright, so what I need to do now, I need to swab my mouth and then send away my DNA. You want it, girl, don't try to hide it. All my homies with your friends, yeah, we came invited. It's my DNA on there. So in a couple weeks or months, I'll know if I'm a dog. So, um, I just realized before I send the package, I have to create a little dog profile for myself so that they know what dog they're getting DNA from. So, what do you call your dog? Cutie booty. Cutie booty? How do you spell booty? With a T, not a D, right? Cutie booty. <laughs> they're gonna think it's so weird that they're testing it. Because now, whenever I get the DNA back, all the emails are gonna be like, Cutie booty's DNA is now updated. So, is cutie booty male or female? This cutie booty? Male. Tell us something fun or unique about Cutie Booty. A lot of people think Cutie Booty is different, but Cutie Booty doesn't care because Cutie Booty is Cutie Booty. <laughs> so I still have a couple characters left. I only used 110 out of 500, so I'm gonna write one more sentence. Cutie Booty is so. Is Cutie Booty already neutered or expected to be neutered? This Cutie Booty, not neutered, right? I'm not neutered. I don't think so. That's it. Profile's made, Cutie Booty. Let's do this, baby. Let's figure out what kind of dog I am. All right, guys, so it has been a month and I just got an email. The DNA results are in. I'm about to open up the email and see what kind of dog I am. This is all I've been thinking about this whole time. I haven't been able to focus on anything except for the fact that I might be half dog or 10% Poodle, or 5% Labrador, or 72% Husky, or 100% Cockapoodle, or 4% Yorkie, or maybe 7.5% Corgi. I could be any of those things, and I'm gonna figure that out right now. Damn it! Damn it! Fine. DNA tests are a real thing. They're accurate. Dog DNA tests aren't a scam. It said. Uh, the saliva wasn't able to be processed, something went wrong. What went wrong is that I gave him human DNA. Damn it! I guess what I should do is do some research and give you some sort of information as to why the results came out the way they did, why this video turned out pretty boring and I'm not a dog. Um, so let me see. Yeah, I couldn't figure out how the DNA stuff works. I spent a couple hours researching. I have no idea. So what I'm gonna do is actually, I'm gonna call someone from the company to get specific answers as to how the process works. Thanks so much for um, jumping on this call. I just, just got the results back and it said that I have zero dog in me, that they actually couldn't analyze my <laughs> DNA. So I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about how the DNA is tested and why my DNA didn't match up with any dogs. So the DNA is tested um, with what we call a microarray. So it's this chip and we put DNA on the chip and we put dog DNA on the chip. And the thing about DNA is that it's a double strand. So if you have one strand, um, if you get a matching strand, it sticks together. So if you put dog DNA on our dog chip, it's gonna match what we've put on it. And it's gonna tell us what version of different alleles uh, across the genome your dog has. If you put human DNA on it, it's not gonna match anything on the chip. It just washes right through, and then we're like, oh, we didn't get any dog DNA, your test failed. Humans have no, the DNA is just completely different than dog DNA? Uh, pretty much, so if you look at um, you know, the genes that are coded in the human genome versus the dog genome, they're about 90% the same. Of course, if you look at the individual letters, making up the genomes, they're only gonna be about 70% the same. And when we're designing our probes, we're looking at uh, dozens and dozens of letters in a row. 
So even though some of them are the same, in fact, most of them are the same, there's enough differences, it just doesn't match up. Do you think there in any, uh, there's any plausible chance that a human DNA would ever just accidentally stick or match? Like, or is it a pretty foolproof system? Uh, it's a pretty foolproof system. So there's 200,000 plus markers on our array. It's, it's possible, uh, maybe it's the highly conserved region, uh, you get 10 or 20 of them that do match up with a, with the human and a human test would make a result there. Uh, we're still gonna fail that sample, right? We want our samples to be, to have over 99% of the chip returning results. We're not gonna, we're not gonna pass a sample that only has 1% or less returning results. Mm, that makes sense. Amazing, well, thank you for clarifying with me that I'm not uh, a dog. <laughs> I guess I'm fully human. I'm 100% human. So thank you for confirming that and for taking the time. <laughs> well, we didn't confirm that you're human. We just confirmed you're not dog. <laughs>